Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Call of Cthulhu. And we are here in the Dark Water Caverns, guys, and the end is nigh. At least if Sarah Hawkins and her cult have anything to say about it. We're here in this weird summoning circle where we apparently ran into Marie Colden. Not dead. She's, she's probably dead. We're just hallucinating. Our sanity is very low. So low that we weren't able to resist any of the Leviathan's tests. And I have a feeling that the end of the game here is relatively soon. And if you want to know how I know that, check this out. If you hear that sound, that is the game telling me I cannot access the diary anymore. So we can't level up, we can't do anything, and that's pretty good determination that we have reached the end of our story. But how is the story going to end? Well, let's uh, move on here with Pierce and find out. I mean, we have no gun. No options. I can't even access the... Uh, I can't even access our lantern or lighter. That's not good at all. We have a significant limp. Like Pierce has had a bad run of it, for sure. Now, was uh, something going to come out of the water? Yep. That seems like a like a very strong possibility. Doesn't look like our sanity is lowering um, in any way. Which is strange considering everything that we've seen. I mean, it's already, it's probably already at the uh, lowest. Chapter 14 Alabaster Point. After a final confrontation, Pierce must go to Alabaster Point where Sarah Hawkins is supposed to be waiting for him. There, he must make decisions that could change the destiny of the world. Okay. Think this might be it, guys. It's been a very um, interesting tale filled with twists and turns. Ooh, that is very green. And I don't we're not limping anymore. Still looking around in case there's anything we need to check. Spot hidden, um, specifically. And that looks so lord. Oh, I thought those were people holding torches. I was like, oh. reality as you know it stops here. None of this makes sense. Go. She is waiting. Hold up, is that... Yep, that is a giant tentacle. So I will bet you money that that is maybe a portal to Riley. And we are, or at least they are, in the process of waking up Cthulhu. front of my eyes don't jump to conclusions is there not the tiniest spark of a scientific mind inside of that detective skull of yours what abject substance did you use to turn her into an empty shell abject substance the serum extracted from leviathan's oil bestows the power of life to me my body is nothing but the mortal vessel of my conscience to you it contains more answers and secrets than your insignificant mind can grasp. Gotcha. So it is kind of like Herbert West's uh, reanimation serum. But it's probably not the life, <laughs> the original life, let's say. 
You never give up. That is not you. Not anymore. Not since your disappearance on the docks. Ah, detective. So easy to fool you. So eager to rush to the rescue of a woman in distress. You won't make me regret having tried to save people. I did what I could. Even for Colden. Your efforts to change your destiny, although in vain, make you worthy of the fate that is yours. The day has come. You will be asked to choose. Oh, that's going to be creepy if all of those lights turn into uh, cultist faces. Like when we when we have another one of these little transitions. Yeah, we are definitely coming to the end of the game. Well, you're less tentacly. You took everything from me. Wife. Life. Destiny. You forsook your right to a normal life. The moment you chose power over humanity. No one wants to see such an unbearable sight. You don't have the slightest idea of what you speak, of what I've been through. I have sacrificed my life to the one who sleeps. My marriage, my family, my own flesh. Why didn't Sarah choose me? Why is it your damn face on her painting? Uh... Hello, me. Open your eyes. You are the most important human on Earth. I don't know. I don't know. So, you've decided to shut your eyes. Find refuge in denial like a spooked child. You've lost your mind. And to think mankind's future is on your shoulders. None of this is real. Trust your guts. If nothing's real, what are you? I am a projection of your mind. What remains of that instinct that pulled you out of the trenches? Oh. You rejected her half-truths. Say that a half-truth is the worst kind of lie. And... so oh, here we thought we may have gone the wrong way. Oh, wow. Okay. Escalation. It's right there. I'm almost there. <laughs> My legs hurt, Truth. Okay, so, uh, what do I do here? Game saved. Well, that's good to know. Sarah's doing a another summoning picture. Here you are at last, truth seeker. She was waiting for you. You were waiting for me. Yes, 
When I finally discovered the truth, I knew you would come. All this time I was fighting it, afraid of what I might discover, but I was afraid of myself. It's coming. What did you learn? <laughs> Listen to me, Edward Pierce, as I will deliver the truth. Eh, oh, we don't have master occultism. Look around you. Everything is falling apart. You must stop this madness. I can't make that choice. This will be your decision. One man, one man only, prepared by the trials and revelations, holds the power to change the world. Because I saw you in the dreams I share with my God. I recognize you for what you are. A truth seeker. One of the rare humans who is able to perceive fragments of his mind. Yes, yes. I feel the truth in your words. Because it was written. Or, as I like to see it, painted on the canvas of fate. Pierce, help me! Oh! Oh, it's the ritual dagger. Oh, that'd be creepy to hear echoing footsteps in an open place like that. I mean, what's not creepy, really? In this situation. So what, is that... Cthulhu's house key? I will perform the ritual. It's over. Oh, man. Um. Let's perform the counter ritual. I didn't know there was a counter ritual. What just happened? Oh dear. Dedicated to the founder of the Chaosium. Whoa! No, that, okay. We knew this was going to be the end of the game, but there has to be, like, a, a Marvel-style <laughs> um, scene at the end of the credits. We'll, we'll wait before we have any kind of, of opinion on the ending. Because, like, everyone disappeared. And uh, Pierce's eyes looked like he was possessed by a shadow from Babylon 5. Okay. So, before while we wait on that, Let's go ahead and chat about the game. Um, I really like this, to tell you the truth. It's great to see a good Call of Cthulhu come out um, since Dark Corners of the Earth, which was the last, at least in terms of like the first person kind of movement um, style game. It's a lot more linear than Vampire, which was another game that Focus Home Interactive did, and with the same voice actor um, between Pierce and uh, the character there. But to tell you the truth, despite the fact that it was a lot more linear, 
it was almost like I was in a one-player Call of Cthulhu campaign, which I guess was kind of the point. Um, it told a really good story that was able to tap into other Cthulhu-based stories and lore without coming off as a big, um, as just a ripoff. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we're playing an adaptation. They were able to kind of do that with um, Dark Corners of the Earth, but it was more a retelling of the Chronicle of Innsmouth with some of their own twists and turns. So having an original story that was able to um, take stuff from Innsmouth and Pikmin's model and all these other stories is very cool. And I love the internal struggle and how they were able to um, make it look in terms of the game. And the Leviathan didn't know what exactly he was. I guess just a minion of Cthulhu, just like Dagon and Hydra. And uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. And I don't remember what I paid for the game. I think I only paid like 40. I think it was about the same cost as Vampire. Which I do appreciate that Focus comes out with these games that are cheaper than other AAA titles. Now, I could be wrong in that. Just... If, if I am, I apologize. But uh, yeah, they're really good standalone experiences. And yeah, it was a cool it was a cool story. It definitely escalated there for a while. And I like the fact that we didn't see Cthulhu. We had the option. <laughs> we definitely had the option of summoning Cthulhu. But we had the ability to do the counter ritual, which I believe is one of the reasons, the reason that we saved Drake. Oh, here we go. as you asked us to, Doctor. Good. Thank you. Oh, no. <laughs> Fight Destiny. Okay. So what I was able to kind of, of glean from that is I didn't know what the option it's over was. I know that there are four ways to complete the game and it looked like we had three unlocked. Um, and maybe the other one is when your sanity isn't as low <laughs> as uh, Pierce's was. I'm not sure, but I think that counter ritual was dependent on whether we were able to save Drake from the Shambler, because we had an option to. I just kind of did it out of instinct. But um, the other one was to summon Cthulhu, and I'm not sure what it's over was, but I would like to think that the counter ritual, we prevented Cthulhu from being summoned, but it was at the cost of Pierce's sanity. Which, to tell you the God's honest truth, one man's sanity versus millions of people driven insane and dead due to uh, Cthulhu waking up, I'd say that's a fair trade. And honestly, ending up in an asylum, that's the Lovecraftian standard. Um, quick story for you guys before we end the series. Uh, J. Michael Straczynski, the guy who did Babylon 5, mentioning the shadows earlier, when he played his first Call of Cthulhu campaign, um, the storyteller told him that, yeah, you're just going to play until you're, you're either driven insane or you're killed. Because that's normally what happens to everyone who plays this game. And Truszynski was like, well, what's the point then? Like, if you know that you're you're going to die or get driven insane, there's no point to it. And then the story, the his friend said, well, it's not about the ending. It's about the story that got you there. And that actually really stuck with him and helped form a lot of his philosophy when it came to um, writing. Um, certain stories, including Babylon 5 and a lot of his other tales. So, And that's kind of what, I, ever since I've read that, I've tended to appreciate Lovecraft's, Lovecraftian storylines even more because of that. Because of, it's not, you're either going to die or you're going to be driven insane, or you're at least going to have a very troubled existence until the end. No one gets out of a, of a Lovecraft lore, of a Cthulhu mythos story, intact. 
You know what I mean? But it, it, what the, it, what's important is what was done in the middle. And at the, at the sacrifice of Pierce's sanity, I'd like to think that we held Cthulhu off for a while. So we will call that a win. A, a, a win with the casualty, but a win nonetheless. So I hope you guys enjoyed the game. Um, sorry for that little bit of, of frame rate issue there a few episodes back, but once we had the graphic settings set to high instead of ultra, it worked out pretty well. And um, I strongly suggest, if you guys just don't look up the other endings yourself, that you go ahead and grab this game and support Focus Home Interactive and Chaosium and Cyanide Studios and see where the other stories, the other endings take you and how you can unlock that other one. Because trying not to stay insane, or trying to stay sane, seems to be rather difficult in this game. Because <laughs> there are so many things that affect your destiny. Like, wh what does what, you know? But um, anyway, I'm, I hope you guys enjoyed the series. I very much enjoyed it. And um, I guess we will see you down the line. If you guys like the series, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you in the next series. Later days, everyone. <laughs>